Welcome to my channel. We're going to be talking about whatever the f is happening in America. Hey everyone. So I recently came across an article from Vox titled, Millennials are getting screwed by the economy. Again. And if you're a millennial, you probably felt that on a deep soul level, like I did. Many of us graduated from college during the Great Recession of the late 2000s. Or the aughts. Do people still say aughts? Now we're heading into our second once in a lifetime crisis. I think I can agree with my fellow millennials when I say I'm tired of this shit. And it's not that other generations haven't had plenty of economic difficulties. And there have been plenty of recessions that baby boomers and Gen Xers have had to endure over the last couple decades. But we need to take a minute to appreciate the fact that the financial crisis from 10 years ago and the current pandemic have hit millennials especially hard compared to older generations. There's a great article in The Atlantic about this, which I'm gonna to quote to you guys pretty freely and link it so you can read it for yourself. Millennials entered the workforce during the worst downturn since the Great Depression. Saddled with debt, unable to accumulate wealth, and stuck in low benefit, dead end jobs, they never gained the financial security that their parents, grandparents, or even older siblings enjoyed. They are now entering their peak earning years in the midst of an economic cataclysm more severe than the Great Recession, near guaranteeing that they will be the first generation in modern American history to end up poorer than their parents. The statistics are brutal. As the article says, one poll found 52% of Americans under the age of 45 have either lost their job, been put on leave, or had their hours dramatically cut as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, compared to 26% of those under the age of 45. In other words, millennials are going to bear the brunt of this economic crisis, just as they did in 2008. The Great Recession upended the economy as many millennials were entering the labor force for the first time. And now the pandemic and the resulting economic shock have hit as many of us are entering our 30s and could erase any gains that we've made. It's gotten so bad that economic writer for the Atlantic Annie Lowry has started calling us the lost generation. That's hopeful. We're going to be the first generation in modern American history to end up poorer than our parents? Perfect. Wait, why are people riding in the streets again? Historically though, we're not the first generation to be called a lost generation. The term was first used to describe the generation that lived during the 1920s and served during World War I, who were described as having a directionless and wandering spirit. It particularly referred to a group of American writers that lived in Paris during the 20s. A group that included Ernest Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, E.E. E. Cummings, and John Dos Passos. The writers of this era wrote about such themes as the decadence and frivolous lifestyles of the wealthy, and the death of the American dream. Sound familiar? I thought this was 2020. Are we reliving 1920? Well, that Roaring Twenties themed New Year's party I went to suddenly feels relevant. Who knew that going back in time could feel so timely? Much like today, the 1920s and 30s coincided with massive changes in the world. New technology and methods of energy production led to large political and economic shifts, which caused revolutions and the dissipation of powerful empires. Worldwide, political instability was on the rise. Politically, this era coincided with the rise of communism in Russia and the rise of fascism in much of Europe. China was engaged in a bloody civil war and imperialism began to be viewed negatively in much of Europe. In America, even after a period of strong economic growth, the indulgences of the 1920s led to what we know of as the Great Depression, the hardest economic times in our nation's history. So if that's any indication of where we're heading, for many of you out there, you may already feel like you're there. That figure from the Vox article, which is that 50% of those of us under 45 have either been laid off or had our hours cut, puts our generation in the worst economic times since the Great Depression. So here's what I believe is happening in America. I think the protests might finally be showing that millennials are waking up to their situation. 
And if they aren't, then let me go ahead and give you a wake up call. Because I don't want to be angry, but I just expect more than what my government is delivering right now. I understand the mindset of my generation, but technology is not going to fix all of our problems. There's no app for government corruption. You're not going to wake up one day and everything is going to be handed to you on a silver platter. If you aren't waking up now and realizing that our government is highly corrupt and that it's up to you to fix it, then the alarm's ringing, mother Ring-a-ling-a-ding-ding! -ding. Because the only solution is for us to hold them to a higher standard. Our future is in our hands and we have to take a hold of it just like the baby boomers did in the 60s and 70s. They had their cultural moment then and we have yet to have ours. So if you want a better future for yourself, then wake up. You can stand up for yourself and demand better from the people in charge. Because if the government doesn't work for us, why should we bother working for them? Many of the policies that they make don't benefit millennials. In fact, they hurt us. Take student loans, for example. Those student loans that we all know and love have not only been driving up the cost of education, but they've diluted the value of bachelor's degrees for those that hold them. The average cost of college for baby boomers in 1970 was $405 per year at a public college. And now the average cost for younger generations is $27,000. The costs have exploded for younger generations, and they started rising when the government started offering loans. Not only do government loans inflate costs, but who do you end up in debt to to pay those loans? The government! And that's not the only policy that's hurting millennials. Take housing, for example. Since the government introduced federally backed mortgage loans after the Great Depression, housing costs have steadily risen until they went out of control because these mortgages are seen as super safe investments for banks because they're insured by our tax money. This was great for baby boomers who got into the bottom floor of the housing market. But due to rising costs and flat wage growth, it's made housing entirely unaffordable for younger generations. Hence why you're probably watching this from your parents' basement. Not only that, but we also have what's called an inflationary monetary policy. Which hurts the lower middle classes that make their money from wages instead of investments like stocks and bonds. Because whenever the government prints money to keep the economy afloat, it causes a small amount of inflation which makes the dollar worth a little bit less every year. This isn't a big deal over a couple of years, but if you add it up over a couple of decades and add it to the fact that wages for the average American haven't grown since the 70s, then you got a big problem. Oh, and guess what? The cost of healthcare keeps rising every year. Medical debt is the number one source of bankruptcy in the country. That's insane. Prices aren't transparent and administrative bloat keeps rising. We need transparent costs to ensure competition and stop price gouging. Or we need the government to expand Medicare for everyone to ensure a fair marketplace. So as voting season comes up, here's what I believe millennials should demand from our government. One, an end to corporate welfare. Our tax money should be going into investing into us and our communities, not large established businesses. No more bailouts for dying companies that aren't doing a good job taking care of their employees in the first place. Let them fail so that new and healthier businesses can take their place. This includes banks that are just engaging in high information gambling and aren't producing anything useful. There is a place for Wall Street, but it's not from a pedestal where they're able to shake down our tax money from the government when their bets go bust. We also need to reform government regulation agencies so that they actually enforce healthy rules of competition in the marketplace. And we need to give these agencies actual teeth so that they stop companies from taking advantage of the poor and middle classes. 
I can't be the only one that's tired of getting mysterious bills that I never authorized. We need to expand Medicare to cover everyone. This gives health insurance companies an actual competitor in the marketplace and will help ensure fair pricing. Healthcare costs are too high and they sometimes stop people from starting new business ventures. And why aren't we investing in the IRS? So that they're able to pursue cases against large corporations that are skilled at dodging their taxes? A Congressional Budget Office report found that between 2011 and 2013, an estimated $381 billion in corporate taxes went unpaid. We could probably cover healthcare costs for everyone just from that. We also need student loan reform. Let's get the government out of student loans and let the marketplace decide what a college degree is really worth. And perhaps the most important thing, because so many people are out of work right now. And lastly, we need a jobs program that will get people back to work. It's a national embarrassment that over 50% of our prime aged workers are out of work right now. We need a jobs program that will give them skilled job training while also improving our infrastructure. And can we talk about why we're pouring trillions of dollars into propping up dying companies that weren't doing that good of a job servicing their customers or taking care of their employees in the first place? Instead of that, why aren't we focusing into investing into new technologies, new companies that look forward to the future instead of back to the past? Let's get our prime age workers back to work into growing industries that will lead to a brighter and more prosperous America. Right now, we have a country that has welfare for the old and the rich and doesn't invest in the young or the poor. It's a pay to play system and the costs are continuously rising. Our society is a pyramid scheme, which is starting to resemble a Jenga tower. And when those at the top refuse to invest in any infrastructure at the bottom to keep it going, the whole thing's gonna collapse. And let me be very clear. I believe that the way our society is structured right now is against the ideals of the Founding Fathers. They tried to build a nation which is founded on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not who has the most toys wins. You are supposed to have a say in what your government and what your society looks like, and you do. But you have to be actively participating in it. You can choose to sit out, or you can be active in trying to shape a society that enriches you and the lives around you. We have to stop dividing ourselves among racial lines. It's getting us nowhere. Because number one, the issues of race are also an issue of class. We often keep minorities in the lower class, which causes many of the problems that they're facing. French, Indian, Chinese, those are all nationalities and ethnicities. Because that's the way the old world worked. But American is only a nationality because we live in the new world and we've always been something new. That's why the last 200 plus years of our history are called the American experiment because we're constantly defining what that is. And I truly believe that the corruption that we ignore but that looks us in the face every day is the single greatest threat to our continued existence. Are we going to look back at that corruption and stare it down or are we gonna gawk at it as it transforms into a reflection of ourselves? We saw abuses of authority in the police force that unjustly beat down minorities and continues to harass Americans of all colors who stand up against that corruption. We see it in our government every day and we see it in those large corporations which continually bribe government officials to keep the ball rolling in their favor, even against the common good. You can call what's happening right now a revolution or you can call it whatever you want. I'm just raising my standards from what I expect from the government, and I'm not gonna settle for anything less. Welcome to my channel. We're gonna be talking about whatever the f is happening in America.